Okay, so for unit six here, don't forget to also study your graphs, right? Look back at the graph pages for, um, for your other tests. And also the other graph that we have co now covered is um, the rational function, right? So we'll get to graphs in a second, but like y equals one over x, like the basic rational function looks like this and like that has an asymptote at x equals zero and y equals zero, all right? And then know how to move that around. Like if you add five, you're gonna like shift everything up five. Or if you, um, if on the, on the bottom you had x plus two, um, you know, you move everything over left two. So just little transformations like that. All right, so this first problem, um, also don't forget these little things right here. There's gonna be two questions. Two of these four questions will be there. Um, finding zeros of polynomials from chapter four. So like, you know, factoring or using synthetic division type of thing, not a big problem, but um, composition of functions, you know, that's like f of g of x, where you're given two functions and you're asked to plug them into each other. Um, solve an equation with the rational exponent. So that's like we did in chapter five just recently, where, um, you know, like you have the square root of x plus two equals five, and you have to solve that. Multiplying and simplifying imaginary numbers. So, you know, I, things like that, all right. Okay, so um, all this whole chapter six, always about factoring. So before you even think about anything else, think about factoring these problems. So 25 minus x squared, I got five plus x and five minus x. So I have to write it like that. Um, or I have to switch it around and put a negative, but that's a little bit harder, so just leave it like this. On the bottom, I can take a two out. Um, it's division, so I'm gonna flip it over, and multiply by the reciprocal. It's going on top. That factors into x minus five and x plus one. Hopefully you do those in your head by now. And on the bottom, this guy, x minus five twice. Okay, so x minus five goes away, or you can do these, but look over here. Um, I got x minus 5 and 5 minus x, so I'm going to cancel those out, put a negative sign. Um, x plus 1. All right, I think I'm ready. Uh, I got negative with 5 plus x up top, and I have a 2 on the bottom. Or you could write negative 5 minus x over 2, okay? And my excluded values, um, you would never let x be uh, 5 or negative 1 x cannot be 5 or negative 1. Now, for my class, um, I don't really haven't made you do those for this type of problem, but um, I think Miss Wilburn's class, if you're from Miss Wilburn's class watching this, then she likes to do that for these type of problems. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, let's see. Um, number two. So, you have a complex fraction. So, it's just like a division problem. You know, it's this divided by that. So, we're going to keep this normal. We're going to flip this one up next to it. So a lot of factoring here. So I'm going to factor as I go. So my plan is this little factor here. Nothing comes out. On the bottom here, though, I noticed that I can take out a 5, which leaves me x squared minus 25. So not only does it make it, I have to do that, but it makes it easier to factor. All right, uh, times. Now this is going to, remember, flip up and multiply. So this part's going to be on top. That's going to be x plus 5 and x plus 1. This guy down here is going to be in bottom, so nothing in common to take out. We'll just start 3x and x. Oh, let's see. Let's try a 5 because I see lots of 5s going on. So 5 and 2. Let's see. That's 15 and 2. Yep, there's my 17. All right, now this one. So looking around, you know, I got that 6x squared to make up front here. I could do 6x and 1x, but I could also do like three and two. And I notice that I have a three X here. So I'm going to try that three X and two X to make six. Um, and maybe it'll cancel with this because I want to make a two in the back. So let me try that two and one. So let's check it out. Three X and four X will make one if I subtract them the right way. So positive four minus three. All right. And my excluded values, anything on the denominator that I can't use. So X cannot be plus or minus five. Um, and negative two-thirds. All right, so swipe them out. These go away. 
x plus 5, or I could have done that one. Um, and that's it. So I got 2x minus 1, x plus 1. On the bottom, I have 5 and x plus 5 and x minus 5. And you can just leave it all factored. You don't have to multiply it back together. It's fine. All right, down here. So adding and subtracting, I need a common denominator. But, um, so let me go ahead and, eh, never mind. So um, for a common denominator, you have to see what the original denominators are, so you have to factor. So you got x plus three, both times here. So that means that my common denominator is x plus three twice. So when you make a denominator, you cannot make something that's smaller or less than like what's already there. So you can't just have x plus three once because you know that guy would be happy, but this guy wouldn't have enough x plus threes. You can't take something away from him. So you have to put x plus three twice. So that means that this four stays the same, but this guy, he gets an extra x plus three. So I'm gonna give an x plus three to him. All right, so I just need to work out this top part here. So I got four plus four x plus 12. So that simplifies to 4x plus 16. And um, I got x plus 3. Um, oh, I just write x plus 3 squared. Now, something to notice or watch out for, even though we're, we don't really do this to you, but you know, I notice here I can take a 4 out of the top. If you pull a 4 out of the top, you'll have x plus 4 left. And the only reason that you would care about factoring to that is if for some reason that x plus 4 canceled out with something on the bottom or the 4 did but it doesn't so we don't really care about it now all right over here I've got common denominator these are two different things so x minus 7 x plus 7 so basically I need to give this guy an x plus 7 so 2 gets x plus 7 and what's annoying about this problem I have a minus and I have to give an x minus 7 to that so that means that 5x plus 1 has to multiply by x minus 7 all right so I'm going to work this out right here. I get 5x squared minus 35x plus 1, so minus 34x, and then minus 7. So why I did that is because this has a minus in front of it. So this whole thing has a negative in front of it. And um, then I also have 2x plus 7 to work out. So really what I have here is 2x plus 14 on top, minus 5x squared, minus a minus, so plus 34x, and minus minus, so plus 7. So that's my numerator. And so I'm gonna clean that up and I'll put the denominator back. So negative five x squared comes first. Two x and 34 x is plus 36 x and plus 21 over my denominator, x plus seven and x minus seven. And once again, like if you had a multiple choice question and you didn't see this full answer, then I guess you would try factoring the top to see if, you know, obviously something like here cancels out, but um, it doesn't here, so don't worry about it, but we're not going to put ones like that, if I remember correctly. All right, so on to some graphing here. So your asymptote rules. Um, your horizontal asymptote comes from your comparison to the numerator and the denominator of the degrees. So these, the, this has a degree 1, this has a degree 2. So automatically y equals 0, no slant asymptote. These match, so I use these numbers in front of those um, of those uh, terms. I got 12 over 3, so that's 4. Over here, 2 is bigger than 1, so I don't have a horizontal asymptote. I have a slant asymptote, which I have to do long division for. So we will do that. x squared minus 2x minus 3. So this makes x. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is plus 3x. Subtract. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5x. And bring down your negative 3. To make this, I mean a negative five, and I'm pretty much done. Like that's my slant asymptote right there, but I'll just finish it off. So I get negative five x um, minus fifteen. So when I subtract, this goes away. Negative three minus a negative turns into plus fifteen. So that's twelve. Remainder twelve. Anyway, like I said, there's my slant asymptote. That's all I was looking for. So y equals x minus five. Don't forget to write y equals on all of these. All right, um, vertical asymptotes. Well, um, the sky has one at negative three because that is the illegal number. This one here, um, when is this gonna be zero? So think about that for a second. When will three x squared plus one be zero? If you plug an x in here, it's gonna get squared. So it will, it will be positive. It will never turn negative um, because uh, you know a square is always positive. So there's no way that this is gonna be negative one to cancel out that positive one. So you know what? 
you don't have a vertical asymptote. All right, slant asymptote neither, um, and no hole. All right, because this doesn't doesn't really doesn't factor. Okay, you can't factor the addition of two squares. All right, over here, my vertical asymptote. I need some factoring. So I got x plus 3 on the bottom. I pull out an x, which leaves me x plus 3. Ah, so these x plus 3s cancel. That means there is a hole at x equals negative 3. All right, so the hole starts at negative 3. I'll find the answer in a second. The vertical asymptote, the only vertical asymptote left is this x down here. So when you cancel that, this problem becomes 1 over x. So x can't be 0. So x equals 0 is my vertical asymptote. And this also allows me to find the rest of the hole. If I plug negative 3 into here, that gives me the, the y value of the hole. Because a graph would go there if I could go there. So negative 3. So 1 over negative 3 or just negative 1 third. All right. And over here, let's check this one out. Um, let me do some quick factoring here. I mean, I know that it didn't go in, per it didn't divide perfectly. so. It's not going to be a whole, but let's just check it out anyway. Well, yeah. So when I factor the top, I get x minus 3 and x plus 1, and that's divided by x plus 3. And I can tell already it wasn't going to divide perfectly, so it wasn't going to match. Oops. But I'll just show you anyway. Anyway, these do not cancel, so there's no hole. All right. On to some graph, uh, some equations. So again, with equations, you've got to have everything factored. Um, also, you have to go ahead and say what you can't use. So your domain here, x can't be 4 and x can't be negative 2. All right, so if you get those answers, um, you don't want them. All right, this factors into x minus 4 and x plus 2. All right, so um, basically a lot of times a, a difficult denominator is going to be a combination of the other two. All right, so let's go around and look. There's my common denominator right there. So I'm not going to change the 6. I don't need to give anything to 6 to make this common denominator. Um, over here, the 1. I need to give him an x plus 2. So 1 is going to get x plus 2. And then minus 5 is going to get the x minus 4. So what I'm doing by like, giving these things to the top is I'm basically making the bottoms all the same I'm getting a common denominator and I'm giving what I needed to to the top to make that match. And then I can forget about the bottom. All I have to do, once the bottom's equal, and then I just have to basically solve the top. Okay, so we're just left to solve this. So I get x plus 2 minus 5x plus 20 equals 6. So negative 4x plus 22. Just clean that up. Take away 22. Oh, God. Negative 16, right? Yep, and x equals 4. Uh oh, 4 is one of the bad numbers. So I can't use that. So this problem, since there's only one answer and I can't use it, no solution. So a lot of times you'll get, sometimes you'll get two answers and then one of them's bad. Or sometimes you get two answers and they're both fine. All right, over here. Again, my domain, x cannot be 4. Um, and also, this one's a little bit different. Um, so x squared minus 2 cannot be 0. So when I move the 2 over, x squared cannot be 2. And I do the square root. x cannot be plus or minus radical 2. So I'll just add that. So that's a little different, but, you know, still something you've done before. All right, so here I'm going to cross multiply. All right, that's the best way to do problems when you have a fraction equal to a fraction. So negative 2 times x plus 4, or x minus 4. And I have 2 times x squared minus 2. So basically, it like flattens your problem. So this is going to be a quadratic, so I'll have to end up factoring. So I get negative 2x plus 8 equals 2x squared minus 4. All right, I'm going to pull everything over to the right because that's where my 2x squared is happy. So I have 2x squared. I'm going to have plus 2x because that's going to come over. And I'm going to subtract, um, subtract 8, so I'll get negative 12. All right, so now I have to factor. So I notice all these divide by two. So you can pull out a two, or I can literally go like this, divide by two, divide by two. This is still zero, and now this problem is x squared plus x minus six. And I don't have to worry about the two because it's not gonna produce an answer. It's just something making my, all my numbers bigger. All right, 
so let's see x plus 3 and x minus 2. So my answers are negative 3 and 2. And these are both legal, so I'll keep them. And you know, if you want your answer in a solution set, you just put it like this. And over here, no solution, you just put a solution set and it's empty, right? All right, down below. So common denominator, looks like I need a five, I need an x, and I need an x plus two. So I'm gonna grow everybody to five x and x plus two. I need to make sure, but still good to know. <coughs> All right, so over here, my common denominator is going to be a two an x squared, and that's what I need. I need to grow these all to 2x squared. I need 2x squared is what I'm looking for. All right, um, my domain, x cannot be zero. I don't want zero here or here. All right, here we go. So I need to give this guy an x. So x to x minus one, minus, I need to give this guy a two, so that turns into four. And this one doesn't have the x squared. So one times x squared is x squared. All right, so we get x squared minus x, minus four equals x squared. Oh, these x squareds go away. So I have negative x minus four equals zero. So negative x equals four, if I bring that over, so x equals negative four. And that's fine because it's not the number that wasn't allowed. All right, here we go, longest video ever. All right, graphing. So if I'm going to graph, I need to factor and um, figure out all my asymptotes. All right. Horizontal asymptote. Well, these x squareds match, so I am going to um, uh, say to use a one over negative one, so y equals negative one. All right, sin asymptote won't be there. I need vertical. I need to factor for my rest. Um, actually, I could do my y-intercept. Let's try that. So the uh, the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So if I plug zero in, it makes all these things disappear, right? So six over eight is three fourths. Right. And your end behavior is always going to be your horizontal asymptote. So negative one. So I can tell these things before I even like look at anything. All right, let's get to some factoring. <clears throat> so let's see, got x and x. Um, I think I'll use um, three and two. So minus three and minus two to make all that happen. But down here, that's strange to have a negative there. So I'm gonna pull the negative out which leaves me with x squared plus 2x minus 8. So now when I go to factor it, I will have what I want. Uh, 4 and 2 make this happen. So x and x. Um, I'll need plus 4 and minus 2. Uh-oh, there is a hole here. So there is a hole at 2. And to get the answer to the hole, I basically just plug 2 into what's left. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 2 plus 4 is 6, so negative 6. So that's 1 sixth. All right x-intercept. So remember my problem is now this, x minus 3 over negative with x plus 4. So my x-intercept is whenever my y value is 0. So to make a fraction equal 0, because your y value is supposed to be 0, you have to make the top of your fraction, your numerator has to be 0. So that's going to happen at 3. All right, vertical asymptote. The only thing left here is negative 4. All right, so let's graph this up. Nope. All right, so we got y equals negative one. We have x equals negative four. My y-intercept is at 0 and 3 fourths. Um, my x-intercept is at 3, 0. And I have a hole at 2 and 1 sixth. So right there, I'll just put like a little hole right there. So I can pretty much tell this graph is probably gonna be up here and then down there. Okay, so, but when you graph this, you wanna go ahead and graph the, um, the original problem because in case you made any mistakes, maybe you'll see something here. All right, so let's see, make a fraction. We got x squared minus 5x plus 6, and on the bottom, negative x squared minus 2x plus 8. 
oopsie, let me do zoom six. All right, yep, just as we suspected. So you go ahead and finish that up there. So notice your end behavior is your horizontal asymptote. It's coming towards negative one. And then this guy over here, we'll just kind of draw it. Okay. All right. What? Can I get a homework paper? It's up in the orange box up there. But I'm making a video, so. All right. So here, I need a factor. I got x plus 2 and x minus 2. And on the bottom, x minus 4. So um, nothing cancels. I was just checking that out. But I guess I need to see my horizontal asymptote. The top has a bigger degree than the bottom, so there is no horizontal asymptote. Therefore, a slant asymptote. So you need to divide x minus 4 into x squared minus 4. So there is um, an x missing, so I'll say plus 0x minus 4. All right, so x to x squared makes is x. So I got x squared minus 4x. You find it? Yeah. Okay. So when I subtract, these go away. 0 minus negative 4 is positive 4x, and then minus 4 comes down. To make x into 4x, I need a positive 4. So there's my horizontal asymptote, my slant asymptote right there, y equals x plus 4. All right, my vertical asymptote is at 4. A whole, there's no cancellation, so no. A y-intercept is when x equals 0. So when x is 0, these go away. I get negative 4 over negative 4, which is 1. My x-intercepts are whenever the numerator is 0, so that happens at negative 2 and positive 2. So negative 2 and positive 2. And my slant asymptote. So we're going to wait on that, but you know, y equals x plus 4, that's going to be a positive slope, and your graph is going to follow your slant asymptote. So on the right side, it's going to go up to infinity, right side infinity, and the left side is going to be going down, and I'll show you that on the picture. All right, so my slant asymptote is y equals x plus 4. So I'll start at 4 and go up 1 over 1, so it's going to be right across there. <sighs> Vertical asymptote is at 4. All right, so I suspect the graph will be like right here and like down there. Yes, also because um, <clears throat> we have these x-intercepts at negative 2 and positive 2. Y-intercept is at 0, 1. So it's going to be like snuggled like right in there and right there. Okay. All right. So let's see. Oh, x squared minus 4. x minus 4. All right. So there's proof of everything. I can't see this up here. So you can change your window. I need to see a little bit higher. So maybe make that a 20 or something. All right, there it is. So we'll just like stick this one here. Remember it goes up towards this asymptote and towards your slant asymptote. And then down here, pretty much turning around and coming down. All right, last graphing. So um, I got negative four. The bottom is x and x minus three. So horizontal asymptote. Top is smaller than the bottom. So y equals zero means no slant asymptote. Two vertical asymptotes, x equals 0, x equals 3. No hole because no canceling. Y-intercept, um, when I plug in 0 for x, um, oh, I can't plug in 0 for x because that's one of my illegal numbers, so no y-intercept, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, because my, my, my y-axis is, is an asymptote, so I can't touch it. All right. So x-intercept, whatever makes the top zero. Well, the top's not going to be zero, so none of that either. Ugh. All right, um, my, my end behavior is going to follow my horizontal asymptote, so that will be zero. Okay, well, let's see. x equals zero and three, so there's my asymptotes. All right, y equals zero across. All right, let's see what this looks like. Negative 4 over x squared minus 3x. Oops, I still have, I'm going to do zoom 6 because I still have my, my window changed. Okay, so I'm going to draw like a parabola shape in the middle. And then we got these two things here.
Okay. So you don't have to be super accurate, but there you go. All right, back side. Let's see if we can get these things done. All right, I'm gonna go through and write the equation for each one first. So when you do these problems, let's see. It says uh, the distance that a body falls from rest varies directly as the square of the time. So I have S equals, I would have used D maybe, but <laughs> equals K, the constant variation, T squared. Okay, next one. The time uh, varies inversely with your speed. So I'm going to say T equals K over S. Okay, down here. Sales varies directly with the amount of money you spend on advertising. So that would be A, right? So S equals K times D. All right, and later, sales vary inversely with the price. So this is like a double one. So not only directly with A, oops, I was supposed to write A here, but um, inversely with P. All right, and then down below, the volume varies jointly with the height and the square of the girth. All right, so V equals K. Remember, jointly is just like a longer direct variation, so with H and then G squared. Okay, so from here, all we're gonna do is fill in some numbers. I'll do this one and I'll just start up here. All right, so let's see. I need to find K. Skydivers fall 64 feet in two seconds. So 64 here, K times two squared, so that's four. So 64 equals four K, that means that K is um, 16. So my equation is S equals 16 T squared. So that means how far will they fall in 4.5 seconds? All I gotta do is plug in uh, 4.5 here, uh, squared. All right, so all I need is 16 times 4.5 squared. All right, so S equals 324, and it's in feet. Always put a label. All right, down here. Uh, let's see. 20 miles per hour, that's my speed. 1.5 hours, that's my time. So 1.5 equals K over 20. Got to multiply these. So 20 times 1.5. It's 30, so K is 30. So my equation is T equals 30 over S. All right, and how long would it take if you went 50 miles an hour? So I'm going to plug in 50 for my speed, and that's my time. So 30 over 50, that's 3 fifths. So are we in hours here? Yeah, so 3 fifths of an hour. So we'll just put three fifths of an hour. So if you wanted three fifths of an hour, if you want to know like how many minutes that was, you take three fifths, which is 0.6, multiply it by 60 minutes, and you're like, oh, that's 36 minutes if you really want to know. All right, done here. It tells me that um, 60,000 is spent on advertising. So that's A. So let's see. So I got 60,000. So K times 60,000. Um, the price is 40, so it's down here. 12,000 pairs are sold, so 12,000 over here. Okay, so let's divide these out. So 60,000 divided by 40 is 1,500. So 1,500K equals 12,000. Now you could have also multiplied the 40 here and then divided by the 60,000, but here we are. So I need 120, no, 12,000, sorry, divided by 1,500. All right, so we got eight. Oops, eight. So my formula is S equals eight A over P. All right, so it says, determine the sales if the advertising budget increases to 70,000. So um, sales equals eight, uh, my advertising budget is 70000 over, and I'm still going to have $40 a, a pair. All right, so let's see. So 8 times 70000 divided by 40 is 14000 
There we go. And money. All right, last one. So the volume is 144. Okay, height is 20, girth is 1.5. Don't forget to square it. So I'm going to multiply this out here. 20 times 1.5 squared. So I got 45. So 144 equals 45K. So that means I'm going to solve for K now. So I got K equals whatever 144 divided by 45 is. So 3.2. So my formula, V equals 3.2. H and then G squared. All right, so now um, it says, What is the height of a tree with a volume of a thousand? So 1000 equals 3.2. I don't know H and G is 2, so 2 squared. So that's a 4 times 3.2. Gives me 12.8. All right, I'm almost done with my video. My last question, sorry. <laughs> this is so long. All right, 1,000 divided by 12.8. All right, so there's our answer. So H equals 78.125. All right, and my height is in meters. There we go. All right, that's it. Bye-bye. <laughs>